Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. Now, if you were with us last time, you remember that Elijah went to heaven in a chariot of fire? And we think that was angels that were taking him. So, do you think we're going to have another story about Elijah today? Yes, we are, because God's plan for him was not over. So, we're going to see what happens to him today on this earth. But first, Eddie has something he wants to say to you. Well, hi, Eddie. How are you today? Well, I had a question. I was just wondering, you know, how come everybody didn't believe in Jesus when he was here? I mean, it was God. Why, they should have said, hey, you're God. I believe in you. I, I, I see that you are come from heaven. Well, Eddie, the reason that everyone didn't believe in him was because he came disguised. What? He had a disguise on? Oh. Well, what was that disguise? What did he look like? Was it different? Strange? Funny? What was it? Well, Eddie, I'm glad you've come today because we're going to talk about what that disguise is, but I'm not going to tell you right now, so you're just going to have to stick around and you're going to see what his disguise was. Well, I never knew that before. I'm sure glad I came today. Did you know Jesus had a disguise on when he came to this earth? Oh, I didn't know that. Hey, I got to go. I want to listen. I'll see you later. Okay, bye everybody. Mm, bye. Love ya. Now, the Bible tells us that there is one God, but that one God exists in three persons. Now, in the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they were all there. And the Old Testament tells us a lot about God the Father. It also mentions his Son, but it never tells his name. So when he came down to this earth, he was given a name. And do you know what that name was? The name was Jesus. That's right. His name is Jesus. But sometimes we see him called the Lord Jesus. So what does it mean? when he's called the Lord Jesus. Well, Lord is a title, and it means ruler. Now, in Jesus' case, it is he is ruler over all. Now, I have a title, and a lot of people call me by my title. They will say Mrs. LaPointe. LaPointe is my name, but Mrs. means I'm married. It's a title. So when they say Mrs. LaPointe, they're using a title, they're using my name. It's the same with Lord Jesus. When we say Lord Jesus, this is his name, but the title means he's ruler over all. He's Lord. He's above everyone. Now sometimes, though, we see he's called the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does Christ mean? Well, Christ means the anointed one, and it also means the promised one. And he was promised in the Old Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, when he was promised, it never uses his name. But in the Old Testament, he is many times called the Messiah. And here he is called the Christ. They mean the same. One is in Hebrew. Messiah is Hebrew. Greek is Christ, meaning the same word. If I were to say water in Spanish, I would say aqua. If I were to say water in English, I would say water. They're the same word. Christ and Messiah are the same. They mean the promised one. And kids, the fact that Jesus was promised, it's amazing. You know, it's so hard to say. In 1,000 years, there's going to be someone that's born in Los Angeles. 
we don't even know if Los Angeles is going to be there in a thousand years. Then we say, and this person, he's going to be born of a virgin. He's, he's, he's going to, to have other things that happen to him. His hands will be pierced. There were over 300 things that it said that would happen with Jesus when he was born, the promised one, and they did. So, Lord Jesus Christ means he's ruler over all. His name is Lord, and he is the promised one. Now, in our verse today, we're going to be talking about what the Old Testament said. So we're not going to use his name since his name was not mentioned in the Old Testament. We know he's Lord, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use that he's the promised one, the Christ. So our verse today goes that Christ. Now, why did Jesus come? Why did he come to this earth? He came for one reason. He came and took upon himself a body so that he could die. And kids, he died for something that he'd never done. He died for sin, but it wasn't his sin. He was perfect. He's the only one who never sinned. He died for your sin and for my sin. Now, you know, kids, sometimes people will sin and they'll say, oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, my lie wasn't that bad. Oh, you know what? There's people a lot worse than me. But God says that the punishment for our sin is that we cannot be in the presence of a holy God because he's holy, he's perfect. And he says, I can't have sin live in my presence forever. And so God says, I see how serious sin is. And the punishment for sin is to be separated forever from God in heaven. But Jesus, he shed his blood. He was separated in our place. He says, I will pay the punishment so you won't have to pay for your sin. So that's why he came. Christ died for our sin, for your sin, and for my sin. Can you say that with me? Christ died for our sin. And you know what? That was told in the Old Testament. Now, you know, there's another word for Bible, and it is a word that begins with S, and it is scriptures. And so the Bible says, our verse says, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It was written right here. This is what he was going to do when he came. He was going to die for our sins. It was written right here in the Old Testament. Now, uh, when somebody dies, what do you do? Oh, you bury them. Now, you know, because I've never been, well, I've seen a dead person. I've been in the same room, but not, not, I haven't been the only one. But in those days, they knew when a person was dead. And they could see that he was dead. And so they took and they buried him. They put him in a tomb. You know, we dig holes in the ground sometimes, but they would put them in a, in a tomb, and then they would put a rock over in front of it. But the Bible says that he, he didn't stay dead. He had the power to make himself alive. Do you know that there's a lot of people, if they had the power to make themselves alive, they would do it. But Christ did. And because he had the power to make himself come alive, he has the power to make us come alive too. And so our verse says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again. Can you say that with me just out there? All right, when I point to the picture, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again. Now, when he was buried, how long did he stay dead? Do you know the Bible tells us that he stayed dead for three days? And you say, well, that's not very long. It's long enough for your body to begin to decay and to smell and to break down. And you know what, because they say that if in four minutes, you don't get blood to your brain, and then they get blood starting to your brain again, you're not going to be the same person. Christ was dead for three hours, and then because of his power, he was able to make his body start working again. And so it was the third day that he came alive, and then it ends with 
one other phrase and I'm going to show you what do you think this would be? What was this? According to the scriptures. So right here when we see this it's going to be according to the scriptures. Same thing, two different places. All right, so let's see if we can take it from the top. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, you know, some people, well, I was one of them, I had gone to church all my life, but I didn't know when somebody says, what is the gospel? I thought, well, gospel means good news, but I'm not exactly sure what just the gospel is. You know, kids, if anybody ever asks you, what is the gospel? Here is what the gospel is. It is with me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news. Christ died for our sins, but he just didn't die for our sins. He came alive again and he will give us life too. For all those who believe. Now kids, you can't just say, oh, Christ died for everybody's sins. Yeah, he died for everybody's no, you need to say Christ died for my sin. I've sinned. He died on that cross for me. And then you say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for, for forgiving my sin so that my sins can be forgiven and I won't have to be separated from God someday. So that's the wonderful verse we have to learn. Now I'm going to show you the motions. And it is Christ died. Of course, these are the nail prints in his hands. Christ died for our sins, and then we have the book according to the scriptures. Now this is the ground right here, and he was buried into the ground, buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Can you say and sing that right now? job. Try it again. One more time, please. Thank you, that was great. Now you remember in our story last time, there was Elisha, and he saw Elijah go to heaven in a chariot of fire. And remember in Psalms it says the angels are as chariots of fire. So there was Elijah, and he went to heaven without dying. But you know that God had a plan for Elijah and it wasn't over yet. You know God has a plan for your life and kids he has a wonderful plan and remember at one time Elijah got very discouraged because God had done these tremendous miracle of sending down the fire and burning up the altar and he thought surely that everybody would turn to God then they would see that yes God was really God. Do you know what it tells us? It tells us that sometimes we just think, oh, I wish God would just make a big display. Then everybody would believe in him. That's not true. 
because we're going to find out that when Jesus was on this earth, he did these fabulous miracles, and people didn't believe in him either. So you know God speaks to us through his word in a still, small voice. That's what really changes the hearts of people. Well, the Bible tells us that it was 900 years later. The Bible tells us that 900 years later that God sent down his son. And who was that? It was Jesus. Now, Jesus was God. And Jesus, as he walked on this earth, he had some followers. And these were people that would follow him and listen to him because they wanted to learn everything that he had to say. And they were called disciples of Jesus. You know, kids, you can be a disciple too. If you want to learn everything that he has to say, I hope you take every opportunity to learn about him. Well, these disciples were following Jesus. And though Jesus, remember we were talking about, he came in a disguise. Jesus didn't look like who he really was. Now, I, I look like just exactly who I am. But Jesus didn't. Jesus, remember, he was God. He was, he was born of a virgin. His father was the Holy Spirit. And yet he didn't look any different. He would do these fabulous miracles of feeding people and turning water into wine and raising the dead and curing the leopards. And yet, he looked just like anyone else. And so, after about two years, Jesus asked his disciples a question. All right, you are among the people. You, you've heard what the people have said. Who do the people say I am? Now, kids, the people, they thought he was something really special. They said, oh, he is one of the Old Testament prophets that have come back alive, come back again to visit us. Now, kids, that's pretty important to be, for them to think he was an Old Testament prophet that, that came alive. But you know what? They were not right. In fact, they thought he was very important, but it wasn't high enough. He was more than just an Old Testament prophet. And so Jesus turned to his disciples, and he says, okay, that's what the people say. What do you say? You've been with me. You've been the closest to me. You've heard everything. You've seen everything. Who do you think that I am? And you know, the Bible says they got it right. They said, oh, Jesus, you are the promised one. You're the Christ. You're the one that was promised in the Old Testament that would come. But you're even more than that. We thought that when the promised one would come, he would be a great person. But, but you're the son of the living God. You, you're God himself. We know that you are God. And Jesus said, you are right. That's exactly who I am. Now, kids, in the Old Testament scriptures, it talks about Jesus coming, but it talks about him coming twice. And the first time, he was going to come for a different reason than the second time. But it wasn't specified in the Old Testament what time he was coming and for what purpose when. And so the disciples, they had studied the Old Testament, and they said, Oh, Lord, you are going to rule and reign. But Jesus as soon as they knew who he was, that he was this promised one, he was the son of the living God, they wanted, he said, I'm going to tell you why I came. He says, I came to die on the cross. But don't be discouraged because I will come alive again. Now, you know what the disciples said? They said, oh, no, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. Well, did it happen to the Lord? Yes, it did. But they said, but, but, but we thought you were going to rule and reign. Well, no, 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 this isn't what we read out of our Old Testament scriptures. Yes, 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 we know that you're that promised one, but we know that that promised one is going to rule and reign. And now that you're God, oh, it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous time. The kids, were they right? Or was Jesus right? You see, they wanted Jesus to set up his kingdom, and he was. 
He was going to even set up his kingdom this time. But his kingdom was going to be a little different. It was going to be in the hearts of those who believe in him. And so the Bible says that, you know, in order to be part of his kingdom, first of all, you must have your sins forgiven. If your sins are not forgiven, you're never going to be part of the kingdom that he is going to come for the second time. Well, after that, Jesus, he says, I am going to go pray. Now, kids, uh, sometimes I pray at home. And when I pray at home, I must tell you, I, I need to have a quiet. Because if it's not quiet, then, then I, I think of this or somebody saying that and, and my mind wanders. And so Jesus was the same. He says, I am going to go to a place that's quiet. So he took some of his disciples and he says, I want you to come with me up to a high mountain. So the disciples went with him up to that mountain. And up there, Jesus began to pray. But you know what? The disciples, they're like a lot of us. Sometimes if you begin to pray at night, you know, the next thing you know, you're waking up in the morning. And that's what happened to the disciples, that instead of praying, they went to sleep. But you know, Jesus, when he was up on that mountain praying, the Bible tells us that that disguise that he had come with as an ordinary man, that disguise came off. He showed who he really was. And the Bible says that as he was there praying, that his face shone like the sun. Now, we can't even look at the sun from where we are, and it's so far away. His face just shone with a light like the sun. Remember Moses when he went up on the mountain and he would talk to the Lord that people would say, put something over your face. It's way too bright. So he would put a veil over his face and they said, okay, now we can talk to you. Jesus' face was so much brighter. And you know, his clothes, his clothes couldn't cover up his glory. The Bible says that out from him was coming lightning. It was just flashing out from him. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. This is who Jesus really was. He was not an ordinary man. He was the son of the living God, and he was showing them who he really was. But they were asleep. But the Bible tells us that all of a sudden, he was not alone. <gasps> With him was the man who wrote, God used to write the Ten Commandments. Who was that? It was Moses. Oh, Moses was right there too. And then, guess who else was there? Oh, it was Elijah. Oh, he was so glad. You know, he had been so discouraged while he was here on this earth because he thought that God wasn't working out his plan the way he should. But now he had been in heaven, and he realized what God's plan was. And so they began to talk. Now, you know, what do you think that they would talk about? You know, the Bible tells us that they spoke of the most important thing that has ever happened in the history of this world. Now, if I were to ask you, what is the most important event that has ever happened in the history of this earth, what would you say? Well, that's what they were talking about. The Bible tells us that they were talking about the fact that in the Old Testament, they would offer a lamb as a sacrifice. But you know, that lamb was to be a perfect spotless lamb without blemish. And then the father would put his hands on the head of the lamb and say, this lamb is going to die for the sins of my family. But you know, kids, that was just a lamb. You know, if I, if I commit a crime, I can't say, oh, I'm going to send my dog to prison. An animal cannot take the place of a man. But this was just to show them what was going to happen someday. And these two men says, oh, Lord, we see it now. We see what's going to happen. That was a picture that you someday were going to be the perfect sacrifice, the one that would die on the cross. That lamb was perfect. You are perfect. That lamb died for someone else's sins. You're going to die for the sins, not just of the family, but the sins of the entire world. And you know, kids, they were in heaven. 
And they knew that the only way that a person can go to heaven if their sins were forgiven. And so they wanted to talk about this. They were so excited. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you were willing to do that so that we could spend forever with you in heaven. Oh, they wanted to talk about it. But you know, the Bible tells us that who do you think woke up about that time? <gasps> well, it was the three disciples, Peter, James, and John. And when they saw Jesus, and then they saw Moses and Elijah, <gasps> they were overjoyed. <gasps> These men had grown up thinking that the greatest men that had ever lived on this earth were Moses and Elijah. And so Peter said, oh, Lord, uh, sh sh should we build a special, special monument to Elijah and one to you and one to Moses? Well, kids, the minute that he said that, all of a sudden, there was a thick cloud. What if there was just a thick cloud, and you couldn't see me, and you couldn't see anyone? And, and the Bible says that when that thick cloud came, that out of that cloud came a voice. Now, that voice was not the voice of Moses, and it was not the voice of Elijah, and it was not even the voice of the Lord Jesus. And that voice said, this is my beloved son. You listen to him. You used to listen to Moses and Elijah in the scriptures, and yes, what they said was from me, but they were just men that were giving my words to the people. He is not just a man. He is, yes, that promised one, but he is the son of the living God. He is God himself. When he speaks to you, you listen to him. Now, you know, kids, and then... All of a sudden, Jesus, his disguise was back. He wasn't as he really was, full of light and shining and glory. He was now disguised again as an ordinary man. Do you think that the disciples listened to Jesus from then on? You know, I'm sorry to tell you, they didn't. Because even after that, he said, yes, I'm going to die but they never understood. They didn't want to believe it. They wanted to think that he was going to rule and reign. And oh yes, we know that he is. You know, when the Lord Jesus speaks to you, I hope you listen to him. I hope you not just listen to him and can say, oh yes, this is, I know this, God said this, but you do it. Your life changes. You begin to be kind. You begin to obey. You begin to put others first and not just yourself that you truly obey and listen to the Lord. And those disciples realized that Jesus needed to die first in order to set up his kingdom. Now, Jesus did set up his kingdom when he was on this earth, but it was an invisible kingdom. It was a kingdom that you cannot see. You know, if you go to England, there is the kingdom there, and the queen, and if you're in England, you're in the kingdom. But you know, Jesus' kingdom is different. If you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you are part of his kingdom, that he rules and reigns in your heart. And all over this world, in Egypt, there are people that are part of his kingdom that believe in him. In the United States, in Canada, in every country. And you can't tell who's part of his kingdom because they look like everybody else. But when Jesus comes back the second time, he that time is going to come as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And everyone that put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and says, oh, yes, Lord, you died for my sins. I put my faith in you. They will then be part of his kingdom. They will rule and reign with him someday in heaven. Oh, that's a glorious future that God has for us. Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? You want to be part of his kingdom. You want to say, oh, Lord Jesus, I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be part of your kingdom. I, I want to rule and reign. You can do that right now. You can just say, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you died in my place. I'm the one that's 
disobeyed my mom and thrown temper tantrums and, and cheated and, and, and been deceitful and, and, and been bitter. And all the things that God says are not right. They're sin. You can put your faith in him. Just say, Lord, thank you that you forgave me. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you did that today if you haven't. And if you have, then, you know, just remember, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. Listen to him. Read his word. Get to know as much about him as you can, because someday when he comes to rule and reign, you'll want to know everything you can know. I'm so glad you tuned in today. I've loved having you. Oh, this was so exciting. You remember to listen to Jesus. Don't listen to other voices out there. He's the one that's true. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>